Hi, I'm Danielle from CaptivatingCostumes.com. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing the color changing synchrotron, the barrel extension mechanism, and the plasma tube again. Stay tuned. before the cyclotron light rotates in a red color. I want to have three knobs on it representing the red, green and blue NeoPixels in the NeoPixel strip. Now uh, with these three knobs you should be able to change the color of the NeoPixels to display any color you want. So I'm going to try and hook up three potentiometers now and hope that we can change the color of this on the fly. So here we have the three potentiometers uh, all wired up badly of course. We have red for positive, blue for ground and green for signal on all three. So now let's just head over and write some code to get them changing colors. And by writing some code, I mean heading onto the internet and stealing it from someone else. After a quick browse across the internet, I came across this post in forumarduino.cc. And this guy is trying to do a similar thing where each potentiometer controls a different color. And he wrote in his code, which was wrong. And then someone a little bit further down corrected the code. So I just basically mixed the two and created what you're about to see. Here we are over at the proton pack again and all of the potentiometers are currently in their pretty much off position so we get in a very dull white kind of colour. Now if I turn, I think this is the red one, all the way up, you'll see we start to get a red colour. And if I turn it back down again, it'll go back to the dull white. The next one I think is the green colour and if I turn that up, you can see it starts to do the green circling. Now this isn't the correct animation that I should be using at the moment, this is just the one that he used, I'll code my own animation in, in a second. And then finally, the final potentiometer, as I turn it, you can see it goes blue. Now if I mix these up a little bit, we'll give it a little bit of blue, and a little bit of red. And you can see we've now got a pink colour coming through. So this will be the code that I'll be using throughout the rest of my Arduino Pro Mini 1 code. So I can change the colour of the uh, synchrotron at any time that I want to pretty much any colour. Let's add some green and see what we can get out of it. Uh, it's just showing up white. I guess that's because all the colours are on full. If I turn the blue down, what will that make? Oh, we're getting a very dull yellow now. See if I can get some more yellow by turning up the green. With a little bit more tweaking I've now got it displaying the correct animation but for some reason there's a gap at the end of every pulse. Now if I want to change the colour on this I have to wait between rotations to see what colour changed. If you see I put the blue one up at the start of a rotation it won't take effect until the rotation is finished. And that's just standard with the way NeoPixels work. Whilst they're doing an animation, you can't really interact with anything on an Arduino board. But at least we now have infinite amounts of possibilities with colours. So if we pop that back down to zero, the blue one. And then put some green into it. You can see we're getting an orange colour now, and as the green kicks in again, it's going more towards yellow. Now, a problem I've been noticing was the Arduino Due wasn't resetting itself after every time the power was removed from it. So whenever power was plugged in, if I just show you by plugging this USB cable into here, whenever power was plugged in, the lights would come on, but the screen wouldn't. No matter how long I waited, that screen would just stay white. So I needed a way of resetting the Arduino Due with software. The code you're looking at on my screen at the moment is the Arduino Pro Mini 1. And this is the Pro Mini that controls the NeoPixel lights. If you look down here, you can see the potentiometer code that reads the value of the potentiometer and decides what color it is. Now what I've done is made pin 2 on the Pro Mini a reset pin, uh, which is connected to the reset input on the Arduino Due. So when it first starts up, it makes the pin two, it makes pin two low, which resets the Arduino due, and then makes it high again, so that it's not just constantly stuck in a reset loop. And if we head back over to the Proton Pack, you can see that this fixes the problem that I was having. So back over to the power supply, if I plug it in now, you can see the NeoPixel start up, and the screen starts its animation at the same time. 
So I can tell that the Pro Mini is now resetting the Arduino Due so I don't have to press the physical reset switch every time. So that's another problem solved. I now have it playing the correct startup animation so as soon as power is applied we get the startup animation that I want. So if I plug the USB cable in now. I'm overlaying sound effect during video editing just to give you an idea of what it will look and sound like once the sounds are installed and working properly. Although it may not be exactly the same as this, it will be very close. And then the screensaver starts and it just does, does all the quirky little animations like this. And if we decide to change the colour, I'll just turn some blue on and we get hopefully pink. Yep. And if I turn the blue back off, it should go to red. And then I'll get the green one. Turn that up. And then we get our yellow colour. Let's see what green and blue does. Oh, a nice aqua blue. So here's a nice view of the mess that's on my floor at the moment. As you can see, I've left the green on full, red and blue on low. So to give you an idea of how this color change is going to work, when this is all the way fully on, then it will display red. If that's off and this one is on, then it will display blue as the color of the cap. And one of those two will control the green color. They're not actually connected yet, as you can see. And any combination of them, again, will change the colors, which I'm really impressed with. I'm, I get excited by little things. I bought this really thin acrylic rod, which I wanted to use on the barrel tip because having that tube coming out the end of the barrel looked a bit silly. So I wanted like four pipes going around it, uh, around this kind of area. And as you can see with the plasma on, it gives a really nice effect. So if I have one there, one there, and another two around the other sides, they should also reflect the plasma light, which you can barely see. Let's turn this down a bit so you can see it slightly better. There we go. And I was gonna spray them silver, but I actually think I wanna keep them clear now. So let's get these cut up and installed and see how they look. I also need to cut the bigger tube down, which is to act as a slider to push the barrel in and out. Remember kids, safety first. <laughs> Managed to get the sliding mechanism installed. A uh, few refinements left to do, but you get the basic gist of it. Uh, the plastic tubes I showed you earlier will act as runners. So I need to hook the motor up to the sliding mechanism and then I'll be happy. At the moment I'm just pulling it in and out. It will go about that far out once it's finished and those cables will be hidden. So I've got these pipes on the end now which work like runners to make sure the barrel tip slides in and out smoothly. And although that one does look bent, once the rear end of these is attached it will straighten it up. So if I turn it on, you can see the effect. Okay, so we turn the main power on and the end slides out. Again, I'm just pushing it. It'll go to about there. And then when we press the fire button, we will get the plasma. Again, don't forget that one's gonna be straightened up once it's fitted in properly. So I'm afraid that's all I have time for in this episode. I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and I'll probably see you again in the new year. So until next time, see you soon. Love you all. If you'd like to stay up to date with future projects, please don't forget to subscribe to me by clicking the link down here. Also, if you enjoy the particular video you're watching, please, please, please give it a like. I like this. Give me a comment as well. I'd like to interact with you all and have a little bit of a chat more. To stay up to date with my YouTube videos and other projects, please head over to Facebook and like my page, Captivating Costumes.
And of course, don't forget, for every like, comment and share, I spare a unicorn's life. Just keep that in mind when you make your decisions.